Hey there, X-Ray Ed once again. Okay, so the other day one of my students was asking some questions about contrast and how we can control contrast in a digital environment. And I told her the same thing that I've been telling students for years. In digital radiography, whether you're using CR or DR, the contrast is mostly controlled by the computer. As long as you have sufficient penetration of the tissues, then the computer is going to fix your contrast for you. It's not as important. Remember back in film days, uh, with film we didn't have any way to window width and level that image. Whatever you got was what you got. So you had to control your contrast with your KVP. That's why a lot of old time techs, you know, those of us that came along during film times, um, we can be kind of resistant to the idea of using increased KVP because we can remember back in the day when we would shoot lumbar spine or thoracic spine x-rays, if your KVP was too high, then the contrast wouldn't look right. Uh, the contrast would be too long of scale. Um, it, it just, it, the doctor wouldn't like it. Okay, so fast forward to today. CR and DR systems, um, does KVP still have an effect on contrast? Absolutely, it does. Not as strong of an effect, but it still has an effect. And I'm going to show you why right now. If you would, draw your attention back here to the three-dimensional blackboard. And I'm hoping that this is going to show up. I don't have too much good of an ink pen here, but we'll see. Okay, so here's going to be my subject. Um, here's my little guy and he's happy to be getting a radiograph and up above him somewhere is an x-ray tube now that x-ray tube say I've got it dialed for 60 kvp okay so as my beam approaches the patient remember this is a heterogeneous beam so at 60 kvp my maximum photon energy is going to be 60 keV but most of my photons are going to be down around the 25 or 30 keV range, right? Okay, now 25 or 30 keV, can it penetrate somebody's abdomen and uh, thorax? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, those photons are going to pass easily through any lung tissue or any fat or if there's any air in the intestines, things like that. But um, these weaker photons they're not going to pass so easily through things like bone, fat, or I'm sorry, not fat, bone, muscle, um, any kind of metallic prosthesis, anything that's in there that's, um, you know, even at all radiopaque is going to stop these uh, photons. So what you're going to wind up with is not that many photons coming out the patient's back. And here's your image receptor. The latest technology, this is my thin image receptor here. Okay, so we're going to have some photons coming out and interacting with the image receptor, but I'm going to have a really, even with a CR system or a DR system, I'm going to have a really pronounced difference between my blacks and whites. So any tissue that was easily penetrated by the low power photons, that's going to turn out dark, but a lot of that tissue is going to show up white because 60 keV photons they can't pass through that tissue all that um, readily so they're going to get stopped so I'm going to wind up with a high contrast image okay so say I don't like that so I decide to try this thing again at 85 kVp okay well now I, I start my photons going down through the patient same thing as before uh, tissues that were easily penetrated before are easily penetrated again so uh, anywhere I've got lung tissue, air, fat, it was dark the first time, it's going to be dark again. But this time, um, ribs, spine, any kind of bones, uh, dense muscle, that's going to get penetrated a little more easily. So I'm going to have a lot more shades of gray here and a lot less just stark whites. Okay, So even if uh, a rib, say there's a rib bone in there somewhere, um, that might have showed up white at 60 kVp, it's going to show up light gray at 85 kVp because I'm penetrating it more and I'm getting more photons down on my image receptor. 
and the overall effect is going to be a more even penetration because now I've got photons going through the radiolucent and more radiopaque materials also. Okay, so now um, say I, I decide I really want to stretch out my scale of contrast. So I up my KVP to 110 and I shoot again. Okay, well this time the areas that were easily penetrated are going to be really dark. They may actually wind up being over penetrated. Um, they might wind up getting saturated because this is a, a pretty hard shot, especially at a 40 inch SID. Okay, so once again, we've got our photons coming down through the patient, but this time, you know, even the, the photons that encounter bone are probably going to just, a lot of them are going to go right through that. So now my bone is going to be um, an even darker shade of gray. Um, any air, lung tissue, fat, things that were dark to start with, they're still going to be dark, but now any tissues that were hard to penetrate, they're going to also be penetrated. So the overall effect is going to be a more even penetration through all the tissues. And that's going to give me a longer scale of contrast. Now you're probably wondering, whenever would I want a longer scale of contrast? Well, in the case of chest radiography, remember, in your chest you've got rib bones and you've got bags of air. Well, they're kind of like wet sponges, but think of them as bags of air. That is a very high contrast subject. Okay, bone on air. So you've basically got black and white. Well, I don't want just black and white because I want to be able to see the markings of the lungs. The doctor needs to be able to see the blood vessels and, you know, to some extent the bronchial tubes will show up sometimes. Um, so what I want to do is I want to deliberately lengthen my scale of contrast on a chest x-ray. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to counter the high subject contrast by using high KVP and low mass and when I make my image I'll have a gray image and that's going to show me a lot of different uh, a lot of, a lot of gray scale a lot of different shades of gray but that's going to help bring out the details of that lung tissue and you guys know this from doing your own radiography um, in the clinic if you shoot a chest at 80 KVP it's never going to have uh, it's not going to look as good as if you shot it at 110 KVP especially if you use 110 KVP and a grid to help clean up some of that scatter radiation okay you're going to have a much nicer image okay now let's crank up the x-ray tube and take a couple of images just so I can kind of show you the effect of raising the KVP and um, you know what happens to our images as the KVP goes up even with DR. We're going to go ahead and use our DR plate today. The setup for our little experiment is simple. I've got a DR plate down here in the table bucky and I've got this anthropomorphic phantom on here. Well I didn't use the big full body phantom over there because you know that thing's a little bit much to be maneuvering around. But this is a good phantom, it's lucite, and it does have real human bones, so um, you know the attenuation is not going to be perfect, but it's going to be similar, and it'll show us the effect of changing KVP. And I also have a couple of metallic artifacts. I have a penny, I have a, a Canadian penny on one side and an American penny on the other side, so we'll see as we increase our KVP if we're able to tell the difference, you know, which penny is which. Okay, so let's go take these images and see how they turn out. And here are our results. Now, I told the computer that what we're doing here is a supine abdomen. So the computer is trying its best to make our images look like an ideal supine abdomen in its opinion. Okay, so you can see what we've got. This was at 60 kVp, and I decided to just use the AEC, the automatic exposure control, and just let the computer decide the mass for me. And as you can see, we're, um, we're a little underexposed, but we're still in the green. Okay, so our, our exposure index is uh, 1451. Computer was expecting about 1800. Um, so we're slightly underexposed, but that's okay. You know, we can still see what we need to. As you can see, this is a high contrast image. Um, the bones are easily discernible. You can see exactly where the um, transverse processes start and end. 
you know, there's a lot of good tissue delineation here, you know, for what it is. It's just bones on lucite. Um, okay, let's go down and look. Now we increase the KVP to 70. So what happened? Okay, well, our contrast is still pretty high. Um, we dropped down to 33 mass. Remember, the AEC is taking care of this for us. Um, you know, we still got good contrast. We can see where the bones start and stop. But as we start increasing, okay, here we go to 80 kVp, which is a pretty typical abdomen technique. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any real soft tissue here. If this was a, a human patient, we'd have intestines and things in here so that we would be able to see if those were demonstrated well. Um, as it is, we're restricted to just bones, but still, you can see where the where the bones start and stop. So still a relatively high contrast image but not as high as it was to start with. If you go from 60 to 80 you can see that's a pretty big difference um, in the contrast even with a DR system which in theory is supposed to be fixing our contrast for us along the way. Okay now we've hit a point here that I'm going to show you. We're at 90 kVp for an abdomen. Um, you probably don't want to go too much higher than that because you're going to wind up starting to lose some detail. See how we're starting to not be able to see the edges of these bones as well anymore? Okay, then we go to a hundred. Um, not that big of a difference, but you can definitely see we've lost some contrast. So everything is starting to look more washed out. Um, we just we don't have the strong delineation between uh, one tissue border and another. We can still get away with it though. Can we do abdominal radiography at 100 kVp? Yeah, sure, we can. Um, you know, especially if it's a good sized patient. Okay, and then we go, the last shot I did was 110 kVp. As you can see, like you're starting to lose some of the um, margins here where your transverse processes are. And that's just because the, the penetration of the x-rays through the tissue is just becoming so much more even. Um, which, you know, in like in chest radiography, like we were talking about, that's what you want. In abdominal radiography, though, 110 kVp might be pushing it a little too much. Remember, the abdomen is not the same as the thoracic cavity. You want to be able to enhance the differences between, um, you know, intestines and fat deposits and things like that. The doctor might want to be able to see details, um, you know, not just of the outline of the intestines, but if possible, to be able to discern what's in the intestines, uh, foreign bodies or stool burden, for example, or air. You know, free air a lot of times is what we're looking for, which on a supine you're not really going to see. We talked about that before. Okay, so anyway, um, and here was something a little bit surprising that I wanted to mention. See these uh, coins here? If you zoom in on these coins, and you can see, like, uh, because our, our penetration is good, so we've actually we can see the bone through the coin here a little bit um, but the the detail of the coins was actually better back at uh, 80 and 90 kvp than what it is at 110 so this and i think the reason for that is because this dr system is more sensitive than the uh, cr plates and the film that we're used to working with and so um, it's very easy to to hit a breakover point where you go from sufficient penetration to actually being over penetrated. So that was our quick little demonstration on contrast versus KVP on a direct capture digital radiography system. Um, hopefully it was at least somewhat informative. Um, if you have more questions about uh, contrast, density, stuff like that, um, brightness, then uh, please just post in the comments below and if uh, enough people want to see it then we can come up with some more experimentation that will help explain it a little bit more. Um, okay, so thanks very much for watching. As always, be sure to like and subscribe and some of you I will see in class and everybody else have a great day.